What's up guys? Hi, this is Sri Ram Sulia. A very special doctor joins us on the show today. We are going to be talking about kidney stones and what exactly are the causes and how one can go about treating. Uh with us is lead consultant urologist with Manipal Hospitals Yashwantpur and Hebal. He's none other than Dr. Ajay S Shetty. Welcome to Fever 104 FM. It's so nice to have you here, doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Ram. It's my pleasure to be here. I need to thank you for your services. doctors have been frontline warriors of sorts and over the last 2 years the journey must have been incredible there was no user manual as such how are you doing and have you been able to catch a break overall uh yeah i wish i could say i could manage to catch a break but no that's not the case i think in our in our profession we work 6 day weeks and often times it's a 7 day week but yes things are definitely better now we've gotten about going about a normal routines unlike the covid times when every day was an emergency mm-hmm. i think now things there's some sense of normalcy that has returned and we are back to a regular practice so yeah looking forward to this thing staying this way well kudos once again to every single frontline hospital staff who are involved who have been doing an incredible job thank you once again doctor uh, let's talk about kidney stones here i want to get to the symptoms or what are the main causes of kidney stones how are, how are they even formed and what is the deal with kidney stones so when it comes to kidney stones obviously the commonest reason is inadequate fluid intake and dehydration and dehydration setting in various circumstances you know people a lot into fitness these days they tend to focus on the fitness but don't focus on the hydration so i find the commonest reason is dehydration that being said of course there are other reasons and one of the things that i always tell patients is if you have a family history of kidney stones then watch out mm-hmm. because your genetics have something that will make you at increased risk right. dietary patterns increased salt in the diet increased protein in the diet again from the fitness uh regimens have also led to increased incidences so there's just not one reason so either you have the tendency or you don't i think that's just how it is focus on fluid intake okay uh, is pain an indicator how does one start yeah. to recognize that hey maybe i need to go to a doctor and get my kidneys checked correct so as long as the stones are in the kidney they're just silent they will never give you any pain but the the day the stone decides to come out of the kidney and get stuck in that narrow pipe that connects the kidney to the bladder is when you experience uh, you know nani yaad aa jati hai that kind of a pain the pain is typically in the back radiating towards the groin mm-hmm. and it's second possibly to only labor pain that's how severe the pain can get lovely let's talk about treatments here what would be an ideal solution for kidney stones and yeah. how can one go about it um medical and surgical treatments available but the key, key thing about surgery is that in today's day and age stone surgery is no longer something that one would consider an open surgery on most of the surgical treatments are minimally invasive often times not even requiring a single cut on the body now kidney and ureteric stones can be dealt with a technology called flexible ureteroscopy mm-hmm. instrumentations have become increasingly miniaturized and even if it's a 3 to 4 cm stone in the kidney it would only require a small 1 cm incision in the back to remove such a large stone through a technique called PCNL wow so it's minimal invasive and at the same time yeah. one can actually walk out of the hospital uh, in a matter of a in a day or two if it's flexible ureteroscopy the next day if it's PCNL in 2 days that's and you're back to your routine activities in no time well the amount of advancements we see in yeah. treatments as well uh, it's fantastic to see this kind of evolution that's happening in yeah. the medical field as well we will talk about robotic and laparoscopic surgery in detail uh, but doctor let's talk about prevention how can one go about taking care of their kidneys and ensuring that i do not or i'll try my best to avoid kidney stones i think motivation is the key here mm. often times i find that when somebody suffers a stone attack motivation lasts for a couple of weeks when people are hydrating and drinking 5566 liters and gradually that motivation goes down and they are back to their routine i think so if important to prevent kidney stones is to ensure a fluid intake of at least 3 liters every day mm-hmm. cut down on all the fizzy pop pepsi coke i'm sorry but it's not good for kidney stones maybe add a little bit of lime into your water every time you have 
cut down the salt in the diet and in case you have a tendency to forming kidney stones then get yourself checked up and make all the dietary changes possible based on what metabolic problem you have and is there anything associated with hereditary uh, and kidney stones yes so s- genetics play a big role and that's the only part that is not in your control if you're genetically predisposed then you know there is no substitute to water intake and making dietary modifications but those are the things that are in your control you can increase your fluid intake make your dietary changes and just hope to god that you don't form stones well thank you so much for all this information and uh, regular health checkups definitely is key and it plays a very crucial role dr yeah. ajay s shetty thank you for spending time with us when we come back we are going to be talking keep it tuned because when we come back we will be talking about prostate disorders and we're going to answer all the questions relating to prostate disorders as well dr ajay s shetty from manipal hospitals in the studios of fever 104 